Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on surgical site infection. The definition of surgical site infection is infection of the surgical site occurring within 30 days of an operation or within one year if an implant is in place. It can be classified into superficial, deep, or cavity space infection. Superficial SSI is limited to skin and subcutaneous tissue. Deep SSI is affecting the fascial and muscular layers, whereas cavity space infection occurs within an abdominal or joint cavity. Another classification is the wound classification, which can be classified into clean, clean contaminated, contaminated, and dirty wound. Clean wound is no entry into the hollow viscous, such as hernia repair surgery, breast or thyroid surgery, lipoma excision and others. This has the lowest risk of surgical site infection. The second class is the clean contaminated wound, where there is controlled entry into hollow viscous, without gross spillage or contamination, such as cholecystectomy without spillage, hysterectomy, appendectomy. Third class is contaminated wound. This is for open accidental wounds, or controlled entry into hollow viscous with gross spillage and contamination, such as penetrating abdominal injury or open fracture, animal bites, and colorectal surgeries. The last class is the dirty wound, where there is open accidental wound with devitalized tissue, contaminated wound, or perforated viscous, such as perforated diverticulitis, feculent peritonitis, amputations and so on. These surgeries have the highest risk of surgical site infection. There are several factors that increase the risk of a surgical site infection, as shown in this table. There are patient factors, like increasing age, poor glucose control, obesity, smoking, renal failure, and immunosuppression. There are also operation factors, such as preoperative shaving. Longer length of operation is a risk factor, whereas the protective factors include usage of antimicrobial prophylaxis, appropriate skin preparation, and appropriate gowning and sterile equipment. The symptoms of a surgical site infection typically appear 5 to 7 days post-procedure. The common clinical features of surgical site infections include spreading erythema, localized pain, pus or discharge from the wound, and persistent pyrexia. Any surgical site infection should have wound swabs taken for culture at the wound site, especially if a purulent discharge is present. Blood tests for infection markers should be taken, like full blood count and CRP. Blood cultures if any evidence of systemic involvement or sepsis. Consider cross-section imaging to assess for deeper collections if indicated. For management, any sutures or clips present should be removed, allowing for the drainage of any pus and the opportunity for wound packing if required. Empirical antibiotics should be started following the local guidelines. Antibiotic therapy can then be tailored following culture results. The prevention of surgical site infections can be achieved in the preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative settings. For preoperative, give prophylactic antibiotics if necessary. Do not remove hair routinely and encourage weight loss, smoking cessation, nutrition, and good diabetic control. For intraoperative phase, prepare the skin at the surgical site immediately before the incision using an antiseptic preparation. Change gloves or gowns if contaminated. Wound irrigation at closure and use of antibiotic impregnated sutures to close. For postoperative phase, monitor wounds closely, especially those in difficult areas, such as skin creases and underneath skin folds in groin area. Refer to a tissue viability nurse for advice on appropriate dressings for the management of surgical wounds that are healing by secondary intention. That's all for this video. Thank you.